Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today we kick off with the convergence of, on the one hand, robotics, and on the other hand, artificial intelligence, and more specifically, large language models. Now, one company at the very center of both of these big shifts is Google's DeepMind. At the end of last week, they introduced something they call RT2. Robotic Transformer 2, or RT2, is, they say, a novel vision language action, or VLA model, that learns from both web and robotics data and translates this knowledge into generalized instructions for robotic control. The TLDR here, as simply as it can be put, frankly oversimplifying it, is that rather than training robots on first-hand data across every object and environment and situation that they might encounter, RT2 instead translates all sorts of web and robotics data into more generalized instructions that robots can use to make sense of the world around them. And so just like generalized LLMs can do more than just a specific set of tasks that they were trained for, RT2 is also increasing those generalized capabilities. DeepMind sums up, RT2 shows improved generalization capabilities and semantic and visual understanding beyond the robotic data it was exposed to. This includes interpreting new commands and responding to user commands by performing rudimentary reasoning, such as reasoning about object categories or high-level descriptions. We also show that incorporating chain-of-thought reasoning allows RT2 to perform multi-stage semantic reasoning, like deciding which object could be used as an improvised hammer, a rock, or which type of drink is best for a tired person, an energy drink. So what are the types of skills that come with RT2? Well, first, by way of understanding what Google DeepMind actually did, they say they performed a series of qualitative and quantitative experiments on over 6,000 robotic trials. The three categories of skills that they defined were symbol understanding, reasoning, and human recognition. Each task, they say, required understanding a visual semantic concept, as well as the ability to perform a robotic control to operate upon that concept. So for example, pick up the bag about to fall off the table, The robot has to understand what bag is about to fall off the table and then respond to the command to pick it up. Google reports that across all three categories, they observed increased generalization performance and more than a 3x improvement compared to previous baselines. Now, the New York Times wrote about this as well, which is why so many people have been chattering about it. The New York Times piece is called Aided by AI Language Models, Google's Robots Are Getting Smart. Giving a storyteller's flair to the demonstration, they write, A one-armed robot stood in front of a table. On the table sat three plastic figurines, a lion, a whale, and a dinosaur. An engineer gave the robot an instruction, pick up the extinct animal. The robot whirred for a moment, then its arm extended and its claw opened and descended. It grabbed the dinosaur. As the New York Times points out, until very recently, this demonstration would have been impossible. Robots weren't able to reliably manipulate objects they had never seen before, and they certainly weren't capable of making the logical leap from extinct animal to plastic dinosaur. However, they say a quiet revolution is underway in robotics. As the Times reports, right now Google isn't planning on selling these RT2-powered robots or releasing the model more widely. However, they do believe that eventually this type of robot that has a built-in language model is going to find its way into many, many use cases. Now, just to leave on an ominous note, the New York Times concludes their piece, If you're the kind of person who worries about AI going rogue, making robots that can reason, plan, and improvise on the fly probably strikes you as a terrible idea. But at Google, it's the kind of idea researchers are celebrating. After years in the wilderness, hardware robots are back, and they have their chatbot brains to thank. Next up, a story that is at once nerdily cool, as well as possibly enraging for the anti-tech set. Gizmodo is reporting that Dungeons & Dragons owner Hasbro has teased the idea of integrating, quote, powerful AI-driven game mechanics for D&D. This comes as part of a press release for a partnership announcement between Hasbro and Explored. That press release says that the partnership would allow Hasbro to, quote, deliver innovative gameplay to our players and fans, limitless digital expansions to physical games, seamless onboarding, and powerful AI-driven game mechanics. When asked by GamesRadar for more on what AI-driven game mechanics meant, a VP at the company said that AI might be used to do things like, quote, generate experiences that could react to player decisions right away, and potentially streamline rules to make it easier on newer players. Gamers taking to Twitter were unsurprisingly upset. Alasdair Stewart says, Almost the first of the month, Joe Hasbro. Shall we unleash the stupidity kraken again? Jack Murphy says, Kind of sad watching this game become a victim of its own popularity, as Hasbro makes every mistake possible as it tries to squeeze blood from a stone. H. Hooligan says, Let's be honest. Technology has made character creation and gameplay easier, but this is nothing more than Hasbro and Watsy trying not to pay humans if possible. And Cora Bullard simply says, Stop with this AI crap no one wants or needs. I don't know, man. I'm kind of excited. Let's see what they do. Moving on to our next topic. It seems like every weekend in the Bay Area, there is another big hackathon, often taking place at the AGI house, which builds itself as the machine learning hacker house, bringing hackathon life back to Silicon Valley. 
Jeremiah Awang was at last weekend's Anthropic Hackathon, and the list of projects are pretty interesting. There was a real-time fact-checking platform for live broadcasts, Dr. Claude, which is effectively a personal AI physician that uses your own data, ImmigrantFirst.ai, which helps immigrants figure out what information they need based on the government of whatever jurisdiction they're in and what they have to file, and the winning project, which was called Claude Scholar. Jeremiah summed it up, finds insights in existing data from molecular scientists, upload data, PDFs, which it can then summarize information, apply for grants, and generate new info such as molecule variants. Finally today, we continued to see policy efforts in the United States around AI. Last week saw the introduction of the CREATE AI Act, which stands for Creating Resources for Every American to Experiment with Artificial Intelligence Act. The CREATE AI Act would establish the NAIRR, the National Artificial Intelligence Research Resource. And if you're exhausted with these acronyms, basically what this is trying to do is to ensure that it's not just big tech companies that can actually do cutting-edge AI research. The NAIRR is designed to be a, quote, shared national research infrastructure that provides AI researchers and students from diverse backgrounds with greater access to the complex resources, data, and tools needed to develop safe and trustworthy artificial intelligence. Sponsoring Congresswoman Anna Eshoo said, AI offers incredible possibilities for our country, but access to the high-powered computational tools needed to conduct AI research is limited to only a few large technology companies. By establishing the National Artificial Intelligence Research Resource, my bipartisan CREATE AI Act provides researchers from universities, nonprofits, and government with the powerful tools necessary to develop cutting-edge AI systems that are safe, ethical, transparent, and inclusive. The four primary goals are to 1. Spur innovation and advance the development of safe, reliable, and trustworthy AI research and development. 2. Improve access to AI resources for researchers and students, including groups typically underrepresented in STEM. 3. Improve capacity for AI research in the United States. 4. Support the testing, benchmarking, and evaluation of AI systems developed and deployed in the United States. Now, ultimately, what this represents, I believe, is the fact that AI isn't going to be just one big set of banner legislation. Sure, we might get comprehensive legislation from the likes of Chuck Schumer, who has been working on exactly that, but I think it's far more likely that along the way, we see lots and lots of these very specific smaller bills, which are highly focused, have a good chance to pass, and address some aspect of the AI ecosystem that politicians want to get addressed, perhaps on its own terms, without having to argue in the context of a larger, more comprehensive, and thus more controversial bill. In this case, the concern is that the high cost and barriers to entry of developing AI and of advanced AI research could reinforce inequalities that exist already, thus an attempt to expand access and have this next technology wave not necessarily reflect the biases of the last. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Thanks as always for listening or watching, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.